Hello, I'm John Baptiste. This is my barber, Chad. He's gonna cut my hair right now, and we're gonna get fresh for the show. Yes, indeed. My goodness, Congressman John Lewis. How are you, sir? I'm doing fine, sir. Who are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm feeling good. It's good to see you well, here at the barbershop. Well, good to see you. You know you learn so much just by visiting or coming to a barbershop. What, what was your go-to when you were a teenager? What was your go-to haircut? I remember when I was 17 and 18 and got involved in the civil rights movement. That's right. And one day I heard that if we continue to sit in, um, we may um, get arrested. So wow. I wanted a clean haircut. I wanted to look fresh. Right, represent uh, yourself oh in yes. a certain way. I wanted to look fresh, uh, clean, a uh, sharp. Mm -hmm. So I had very little money. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to a used men's store. Really? And, and, and they and, gave out haircuts? Well, I got a suit. Oh, yeah. A, a, a used suit. Wow. And a haircut. Ah, and I did look clean. Good. I looked fresh. Yes. I looked sharp. Uh huh. It's a statement. Yeah, it's a statement. They see you. Right. They see you first, and, and when they see you, your, your attire is, is a representation of, of who you are right. and your message. That's, that's a powerful thing to think about. Another question I wanted to ask you about is a uh, jerry curl. Oh, I remember. Did, did you have a jerry curl? Well, I have to ask. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> you may not believe this, but my hair was sort of curly naturally. Oh, yeah. You probably heard the story growing up in the African-American community. They would say something like, uh, good hair. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, the, 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 <laughs> the young girls and ladies would put their fingers in your hair and say, oh, you have good hair. Yeah. I put some water, no, just water on it. Oh, yeah. And just... Uh, sort of threw it back. Did you ever do the comb? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> like James Brown? No, not, it was not for me. Yeah, that's, no. that, that's, a, that's a style. I, I was thinking about bringing it back. I don't know if I could rock it, though. Yeah. I don't know. You think I could do it? Nah, I can't. <laughs> think I could? And, and, <laughs> and, and, and once I did have uh, sideburns. Really? Yeah. Made me look different. When I was growing up as a young child, uh, I wanted to be a minister. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up called Boy Preacher. And my classmate in uh, elementary school and middle school and high school called me Boy Preacher. And as a little boy, I, on the farm, it was my responsibility to care for the chickens. And um, we used to raise chickens. And, I would gather all of our chickens together in the chicken yard. Yeah. And my yeah. brother and sisters and cousins would learn the outside of the chicken yard, and I started preaching to the chickens. Wow. And uh, I tell young people today that some of those chickens that I preached to were a little more productive than some of my colleagues in the Congress. At least they produce eggs. <laughs> yes, indeed. Right on. <laughs> Who are the leaders in the black community now? your estimation in terms of uh, our generation, who is equivalent to Martin Luther King? And well, I, I don't think there's any one that come to mind that can fill the shoes um, and occupy the space mm. that Dr. King uh, <laughs> occupied. He, uh, he was one of a kind. Um, I think he been, had been maybe tracked down by what I call the spirit of history. Mm, what do you mean and by that? That maybe, maybe God Almighty uh, ordained him to play the role that he, he played. And uh, he played it well. Right. Uh, he inspired a generation and he's still inspiring people today. When you listen to his speeches or read his books and people all over the world so today, all over the world, people are saying we shall overcome. Uh, and that message of hope and optimism uh, is still being spread to humankind because of Dr. King. Because of, he picked up, in a sense, where Gandhi left off right. and started right. preaching and teaching the way of peace, the way of love, mm -hmm. the philosophy and the discipline of nonviolence. And, and you continue to spread that message now. I see you have your, your books, 
volumes one, two, and three of March. It is our hope that another generation of young people will grow up understanding what it is to stand up, to speak up, and speak out, and uh, do their best to leave the world a little more peaceful, a little greener, and uh, a little cleaner, the generation yet unborn. In 1957, uh, 58, a comic book came out called Martin Luther King Jr. and the Montgomery Story. Mm -hmm. It was uh, 12 pages, uh, 16 pages, yeah. and it, it uh, cover to cover, and it sold for 10 cents. And uh, Dr. King helped edit this little book. It right. told the story of the Montgomery bus boycott. Wow. And it was that book that inspired me and inspired a whole generation of young students that participated in the sit-ins and, and the Freedom Rides. So the and, Dr. And King comics were the inspiration? Yes. Oh, wow. And not young people all over America and in other parts of the world are reading the books. And uh, I was in uh, San Diego at a little library there. And there was a little girl about four years old, mm -hmm. maybe a little older, maybe, maybe almost five. Mm -hmm. And uh, she asked me, she said, Congressman, I have a question. And I said, yeah. And she said, why are you so awesome? Yeah. And I didn't have Good an answer question. for her. Good question. I, I think it's just because I'm John Lewis. I think that's the answer. How do you feel about the things that have happened recently with the police and African-American citizens? Uh, do you feel that the police department is corrupt in some way? Or, or do you, what's your take on it all? I, I think we've got to find ways to train our police officers and teach them the same way we were taught when we were preparing to get involved in the movement. Hmm. Or teach them the ways of peace, of the way of love and nonviolence. Teach them to respect the dignity and the worth of everybody and try to get police officers and protesters to become a little more human. Stay human. Be human. That's right. After so many years of facing hate and facing violence, how, what are some things that you could share with me that I can pass on, like some sayings? That, what are some good catchphrases or sayings that you, you, you have embedded in your psyche that you, you well, remember? Well, sometimes you, you say to someone, they say something hostile to me, and you say, you don't believe that. Uh, you really don't believe that. You don't uh, believe that. Uh, well, I'm mean, gonna use that you, one. Uh, your mother didn't teach you that. Um, <laughs> in, in, in 1961, the same year that President Barack Obama was born, black people and white people couldn't be seated together on a Greyhound bus or a trailway bus, leaving Washington. And in May of 1961, my seatmate was a young white gentleman. The two of us left Washington and we arrived at the Greyhound bus station in Rock Hill, South Carolina. A group from the Klan beat us, and left us lying no. in, a, in a pool of blood when we tried to enter this so-called white waiting room. Now this is May 1961. Many years later, to be exact, in February of 09, one member of the Klan, one of the guys who beat us in the 70s, came to my office in Washington with his son in his 40s. And he said, Mr. Lewis, I'm one of the people that beat you, your seatmate. He said, will you forgive me? Um, I want to apologize. Hmm. And the son started crying. He started crying. And I said, I accept your apology. Uh, I forgive you. Uh, they hugged me, I hugged them back, hmm. and I started crying. And that's the power of the way of, of peace, the way of love and nonviolence. As Dr. King said, hate is too heavy a burden to bear. Hate is too heavy a burden to bear. Yes. Mm. So we just, love is a better way. So I have all of the people that beat me and arrested me and threw me in jail, I don't have any ill feeling at all. Not at all. Mm. I feel free. I feel good, I feel free. 
Congressman John Lewis, thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, indeed.